Hey guys, so I am finally back. It's been about three weeks since I've actually sat down to film a video. I did have about a week's worth of videos that were pre-filmed before my family came to visit, but after that, between my family coming here and visiting, my brother was here with his wife and their three boys, and my mom also came to visit. They're all currently living in Portland. I live in Memphis, Tennessee. The second weekend, my dad came in to visit from Nashville, so between the craziness of all the family being here and then my daughter and I got sick. It was like the 28th of August. That Friday. She stayed home from school. I stayed home from work. We were both like feeling like crap, but our symptoms were not the same. My daughter had like a slight mild fever, but mostly she was congested. I didn't have any congestion, no chest congestion, no nasal congestion, wasn't coughing or anything like that. I had a slight low grade fever, but other than that, mainly it was just I was feeling extremely fatigued and lightheaded and just like dizzy. Every time that I would try to get up and do something, I would just feel extremely lightheaded. My head was hurting, so pretty much spent the entire day in bed. Thankfully, my husband was here. He's an over-the-road truck driver, but he was here for his home time, so he was able to kind of take care of everything, kind of take care of my mom, you know, make sure that me and my daughter, you know, were getting all of our nutrients and stuff. I was also feeling like a little bit dehydrated, so thankfully he was here, and I was able to just kind of rest up. We started to feel a little bit better on Saturday, so we went to the mall Saturday afternoon. We went to the zoo on Sunday, and then the following Monday, I was starting to feel a little blah again, so I went ahead and stayed home from work. I'm an Uber driver, so thankfully, you know, I can kind of pick my own schedule and take off when I need to. My daughter, thankfully, was feeling much, much better, so she did go to school. And I was doing pretty good, you know, for the, the whole week. And today, though, was like the first day. Today is Sunday the 4th, it's the day before Labor Day. I'm finally feeling like 100% back to myself. So yeah, between my family visiting and just kind of getting sick, I just didn't have time to film. You know, filming videos was just put on the back burner, but I am back now and I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I was going to film a little bit sooner, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I was feeling better. My mind was really like back into it before I started. So we are back into it full time and I am pretty excited about today's video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a Nomad Cosmetics palette. As you guys know, the last palette I didn't do, or you may not know, they did a kind of purple themed one. It was for Provence, I think it is. It was like a French themed palette. I didn't get that one because it was very purple heavy. And while I like purple, there was just, there's a lot of purple, a little bit of pink, and then like some pops of yellow. And when you guys know, if you try to mix yellow and purple, it can get like really muddy. So the color store just didn't really speak to me. But this one, when I saw this one launch, and it came out pretty quickly after the last palette, from my understanding, it was some kind of like supply issue. And so the palettes ended up being launched like really close together. And originally they were supposed to be a little more spread out. But this palette, this one is themed for Monteverde. I think that's how you pronounce that. If you guys are not familiar with Nomad, all of Nomad's uh, palettes are themed for destinations, whether it be country, cities, a festival. Um, there was one that focused on like the different parks, you know, in this country in the U.S. So they're all destinations and this one is Monteverde and all of them usually are paired up with some kind of an organization. And this one is the Monteverde Cloud Forest Preserve. They work to protect the cloud forest and all the inhabitants that live there. So this is the story. I'm going to tell you the story real quick about this palette. Pioneer in environmental protection, Monteverde Cloud Forest is one of Costa Rica's most precious natural treasures. So this is in Costa Rica. Consisting of separate nourishing ecosystems, the cloud forest wows visitors with abundant beauty, bounty, and biodiversity. Wonder at the lush forest with trees touching the clouds and peek at the rare creatures and flora hiding in the magical mist of Mount Verde. This palette has 12 flourishing mats and six luminescent shimmers inspired by one of a kind wildlife wonderland. So pops of colors and stuff that are inspired by the flowers and the animals that live in this particular forest. And this is what the palette is looking like. And I love the fact that there is a sloth I love sloths. Sloths are one of my favorite animals. This is actually the palette inside the box. There are cutouts 
so you can see the shapes and the name through the cutouts. And then you open the box, you pull out the palette, and this is what the palette looks like. It's just so pretty and so colorful. And this one just stood out to me. This one spoke to me. Everything from the outer packaging to the inner color story. Now the actual swatches are going to be on my TikTok and also on my Instagram. I'll have photos, videos, reels, all that stuff. But this, this is what the color story is looking like. All this, these pops of colors, the greens, the yellow, which we would definitely be using today. There are some duochromes in here as well. I think hanging bridges and cloud canopy. I think these two are duochromes. I'll know for sure when we actually see the swatches, but yeah, there's different textures and tones and undertones in this palette, and this one just really stood out to me. And all of the reviews that I have seen myself personally, the palette has swatched beautifully. The reviews are really, really good. The one that they did before the Provence palette, the Paradise Islands, reviews on that one was pretty mixed, but this one had some really good reviews, so I was very excited to give this one a try. So we are going to focus on the greens in this palette. I have done, I know green looks, but I just really, really wanted to try these greens. I love No Man's Greens. I've never had any problem with them. So we're going to take Class Glass Wings, I'm sorry, Glass Wings, which is this one, right here, and then maybe blend that into Green Spiny Lizard which is this more brighter green in the corner. And I definitely want to be blending that into Toucan, which is the bright yellow. So I'm gonna take Toucan, I think, and lay that over the lid and then just blend the greens into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take Toucan and we're gonna go ahead and blend that all over the lid. I'm gonna prime real quick using my Milani eyeshadow primer. You guys know how much I love this primer. I feel like all shadow formulas that I try and test out blend pretty well over this one. I don't really have any problems with it. So what have you guys been up to the last couple of weeks when I've been visiting family and laying sick in bed? Anything exciting been going on with you guys? Definitely let me know in the comments. I like to catch up and see what, what all of you guys have been up to the last couple of weeks. Before we jump into the palette, I wanted to share with you guys, I've been trying out the Airbrush Flawless Foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. This is not like a new formula. This is pretty old school, but this is my first time trying it out. I've never really been like a luxury high-end person, but this along with a few other products were on sale, luxury high-end products, were on sale like 70-80% off in the boxy pop-up shop. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and try it out. It's $12. You know, if it doesn't work out for me, then I don't feel, you know, as bad than spending like 50 which I think is how it normal, what the normal price is. But I'm really liking how it's looking. This shade is slightly deep, which I knew that it would be, but I'm just kind of using it with a a lighter concealer and I really do like the way that it looks on my skin. This mixed along with the Touch and Soul primer, the Sorbet primer, these two combined have made my skin look really really nice. I've been enjoying this. I might try to give that newer foundation from Charlotte Tilbury a try. Not quite sure if I'm ready to drop the big bucks but we'll see. All right so I'm going to take this fluffy brush. This is from Eloise. I got this out of a boxy charm and I'm going to use this to just kind of dust toucan all over the lid. I'm always curious about yellows in palettes to see if it has, you know, a lot of pigment, if it's going to be like, you know, super patchy, how well it's actually going to blend. Yellows are extremely hard to formulate. But I'm just going to go on windshield wiper motion very lightly, blending this across the top. That is extremely pigmented. It's actually blending pretty well. Dust this on the top, just like just under the brow bone, not quite reaching the brow bone. Just above the crease, slightly lay that down. Oh, that is blending beautifully. So far, so good. The Paradise Islands palette. I did end up decluttering that one, but... <laughs> It's still, you know, like in the closet, in the box of things to be donated. Thinking about pulling it back out and just keep it in my collection, even though like was not my favorite Nomad palette. If you guys recall, I didn't really enjoy that one. But I don't know. 
We'll see. I might back into my collection and give it another try. This yellow is blending beautifully. I'm trying to lightly tap into the palette so everything, all the embossings and everything are intact when I film my pictures. Or I take my pictures and film the close-ups. Alright, so that is our base with the yellow shade laid down. That shade once again is called Toucan. Now I'm going to take Green Spiny Lizard and I'm going to take that on the Blin Bunny B1. I'm going to blend that into the yellow in the crease and then we're going to take that deeper green and lay that on the outer corner. So if any of you guys picked up this palette, it's been out now for about a couple of weeks I think is when it launched. It's been in my hands for about a week and a half. But I just, I just didn't have time to sit down and film with it before. My mind just really wasn't back into filming. I was still like physically <laughs> recuperating from being sick and from the whole family being here. And I wanted to make sure that my mind was really back in it before I sat down to film with this palette. And this green is blending beautifully too. It's like really blending nicely into that yellow. Just kind of focusing that in the crease area right here in that fold. Slightly blending it into the yellow. If you guys have picked up this palette and you have already used it, let me know down in the comments what you thought, how your experience was with it. I also ordered that Tarte palette, the Noon Man Eater one. It was an Ulta exclusive, at least from what I can see. I didn't see it on the website or even like on QVC. Sometimes the Tarte launchers would be on QVC. And it just really stood out to me. The color story just really stood out to me. So that is on its way. It should be here in the next couple of days. So I'll be filming with that one. All right. This is coming out beautifully so far. So far, I am not unhappy with this blend. I'm going to take the same brush and we're going to go into glass wings which is the deepest rich foresty green in here and just kind of lightly tapping into it in i'm going to focus that in the outer corner just kind of tuck that in and blend that into the crease this is beautiful oh that is a gorgeous deep rich green. If you guys have been following me for any amount of time, I, you guys know I love green. Green and orange are my favorite, so I get very excited when I see a beautiful rich green in a palette. And this is beautiful. Definitely very foresty. Loving that about it. So do you guys have any plans for Memorial Day? Memorial Day, Labor Day. I have started pulling out the Halloween decorations. I pulled down all like all the like beachy summer decorations that I had up. You can see right here. I have started decorating my background. I don't know if you can see very well. But that's a skull, and that's like a rib cage. And then this this right here is two hearts that are like this. We found this at the Dollar Tree. My dollar and I. I saw those and we were like, wow, so pretty. They kind of look like like they'd be really pretty in like a spooky kind of inspired vanity but I thought they would be pretty in my background I might put some more things back there once we get the Halloween decorations out but yeah we're slowly pulling everything out and I'm going to be officially getting everything up on Labor Day I know for some people that is early but in this household Halloween starts in September I would have started putting everything up in August but everything was just so crazy and busy that yeah, we, we didn't get to it, but yeah, in this house, Halloween starts early. I like to go on ahead and get a head start again. That spooky decor up. That is so beautiful. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous green. Oh, I'm loving, loving that. Take just a little bit here. That's out of part. I'm going to lay something down in the lower lash line, and then we'll start doing the shimmers. This flat brush this is from Shop Miss A AOE Studio. Does this have a number on it? No, it does not. But this is part of a little 10 piece brush set. Some of my favorites. What do I want to put on the lower lash line? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That is the question. I think I'm just going to go with the brightest green in here, which is Green Fine Snake. And just lay that one 
on the along the lash line. So I'm just going to take this and just softly blend it here. I want to keep this as tight to the lower lash line as possible. I'll press up my under eyes. I didn't set my under eyes today with powder. I just use concealer. Beautiful, vibrant, limey green. It's gorgeous. So now I'm going to put down a sticky base. This is my Beige Cosmetics Base Booster. Have you guys seen the postings? I saw them on Trend Mood and a couple of other sites. It looks like BH Cosmetics is back. I actually got an email first because, you know, I used to, I'm on their mailing list still. And I got an email from BH Cosmetics that said they were back. So they, and they just launched like a new eyeshadow collection. So I thought that was kind of cool. I wasn't sure if the company was going to be exclusively like, you know, launching through Makeup Revolution. Because we know, because if you guys remember, Makeup Revolution bought the brand. But it looks like they're back now. Back to launching. So I'm excited to see what they come up with. But I'm just taking this. And I'm going to lay it right where I'm wanting that shadow shimmer to go. I kind of want, I'm wanting the shimmers to really pop in this look. And we're going to first go into Hanging Bridges. This one right here. Really, really standing out to me. Use the same brush. I'm just going to kind of dip into the shadow on this brush. And then just start laying it here. This is pretty much going to be like my all over, all over lid shade. And then I'm going to lay something down in the corner. That is pretty. That's like a kind of a shift from like green. There's like a little bit of yellow gold in it. Kind of like a limey yellow green gold. Oh, that is pretty. It's very shiny and wet looking. Very, very, very shimmery. Like it looks like it has micro glitters in it, but it's not glittery. Like I'm not sitting here with like glitters falling all over my face. But that is gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eye, and then we're gonna lay something down in the inner corner. So I started watching you. I've had it saved in my list on. Netflix for like a while and then I finally decided Friday, you know what, I'm going to give it a try and I've already finished the first season and a half. I have fallen in love with Penn as an actor. He is absolutely incredible. The way that he brings Joe's inner monologues to life is just, it's incredible. If you guys are not familiar with the series, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything. Nothing I'm saying is a spoiler. But basically, Joe is like a stalker and a serial killer. That is the premise. He is stalking this young lady that he wants to have a relationship with. And it's your, but most of the series is done with his inner monologues. Like he does a lot of talking, you know, and he's like watching her you know, the different things that he's doing to try to find out about her. He's, you know, trying to protect her and all this stuff. And 90, a good 85 to 90 percent is Joe's inner monologues. And Penn does such an amazing job with bringing these monologues to life in the way. Uh, oh, it's just, it's absolutely amazing. I did some reading because I wanted to see, like, what his process is. And he said that he films in a room basically by himself me to other people and a lot of it is improvised it's not scripted it's a really really good series i've really really been enjoying it and i'm going to continue with it some more later on this afternoon but if you guys have watched it let me know what your thoughts were on it because i have really really been enjoying it i wasn't sure if it's gonna be something that i would enjoy based on the type of things that I usually watch but it's a really really good series and Dexter is like next on my list to watch. All right so inner corner what do we want to do? Do I want to do like a super bright green or take something else? I think I'm gonna take something else. I think I'm gonna take what does it say? Magical Mist which has kind of a bluish silver shift here and I'm gonna lay that in the inner corner. So I'm just gonna lay that here and take that into oh that's pretty. This is a gorgeous shade. I am definitely going to film some more looks with this palette. Maybe I might do two looks for YouTube 
I definitely want to do something for my TikTok and my Reels. I haven't posted on my Instagram almost as long as I haven't posted <laughs> or uploaded to my YouTube, and that's like unheard of. I post to my Instagram like pretty much daily, even if I have not been posting to YouTube. So, yeah, I gotta get back on it. Gotta get back on the roll. All right, so that is looking really nice now. I'm going to do liner, but I'm going to do something different than I normally do. Usually, I would do like a liquid liner, kind of a winged line. But i am been trying out doing like liners with my eyeshadow and just kind of lining my eyes that way. So I'm going to take two-toned or two-toed sloth, which is this kind of a... Um, it's a, a brown, but it looks like it has like a kind of an army greenish kind of an undertone to it, military green. And I'm going to take this angled brush right here. And I'm just going to dip into it and attempt to use this to line my eyes. We'll see how this goes. And because I have to get close to my eyeball, I'm going to use my handheld mirror. And basically what I'm going to do, this is the way that I've been doing it as far as like on my own, just kind of practicing. Just taking that pointy flat end and making a line on the outer corner and then drawing connecting it to my lash line and then taking more shadow and then just filling in this shade definitely has a lot more of a military green kind of a tone to it than it does brown very very grungy. I love a grungy green. All right so that is looking good. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other eyelid. Go off camera, throw on some lashes, pick something for my lips, and then we'll just kind of put together some final first impression thoughts about this palette. So for my lashes I am wearing from Ioni the Wispy Natural Flare Faux 3D Mink Lashes, 100% handmade. Pick these up. I think I got these from Roses, but I, I also get these lashes from Dollar Tree. I love this one. In my lower waterline, I went ahead and threw one of my ColourPop liners. This one is called a Glow. It is really pretty metallic green. This is part of that Lush Life collection. It's one of my favorites. I need to get another metallic copper. That is what I need to get. And on my lips, I line my lips with the Wonder Lip Liner from AOA Studio. This is from Shop Miss A. The shade is in Famous. And then my All Over Lip Color is from Lyra Beauty. This is one of the liquid lipsticks. The shade is in Hollow's Eve. This is part of their Halloween collaboration, or the Halloween collection, rather, 2021. I'm looking forward to seeing what the 2022 launch will be. I'm hoping that Manny will launch a Halloween launch this year, but I thought this pumpkin orange would go beautifully with this green and I, I think it came together really well. Now for my kind of final first impression thoughts. I do want to do some more looks with this palette so I can try out some more of these shades. But so far I am loving it. The yellow, the yellow was pigmented. I didn't have any issues with the blend. All the greens blended beautifully including the deeper green shade here called Glass Wings. I loved the way that the shimmers look on the eyelid. Just everything came together really, really well. Like I said, I'm going to try to do two more looks for um, YouTube and then maybe one or two more looks for Instagram, TikTok. And definitely check out my TikTok and my Instagram if you want to see the actual full swatches and the close-ups of the palette and all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. It really does help with my channel, especially since it's been a couple of weeks since I have uploaded so I can get back into that algorithm. If you're new to my channel and you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you would consider joining my little family and hitting subscribe. And make sure that you tap the notification bell so you can notify of any videos coming up in the future. You can also follow me on my other socials. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Be safe, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.